There's my boy Virgil. He wants to ask you all to do something. Press the subscribe button and the notifications bell right below this video. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Please subscribe, like, and share. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> I'm sitting here this morning, just finished my coffee. Uh, I woke up about, oh, probably, I have to see what time it is now. Look like about 15 after 3 or something like that. But anyway, uh, we have a brownout. Well, at least my neighbors do. Uh, that happens pretty frequently here in my area. It actually happened uh, yesterday about the same time, around 2.30. So that's something you got to get used to here in some areas of the Philippines. Uh, the power grid here is... They're improving it. But they still have their issues, you know. We, uh, I think it was last year, uh, a substation that took them forever to put in, a little small substation. Uh, they brought it online. It helped. Uh, at least it brought the voltage up. That's one another issue you'll find out here in the Philippines too. Depending on the area, even. In some of the small cities, uh, the voltage fluctuation is can be dramatic. You know, I lost the TV and our air conditioner over the voltage. Uh, you can't monitor it 24/7 and uh, unplug these devices when the voltage just drops so low they can't function. Uh, I did have some pictures. I don't know if I, I think it was on a different phone. I took my voltmeter and a voltage. With 60 volts. And this is supposed to be 220. <laughs> <clears throat> and you know, they use a uh, two wire system uh, instead of split phase. So you, you can't get a 110. Uh, I, I have read that the, uh, some areas in the Luzon and uh, Manila area. I, I'm just guessing. They claim that they got uh, a three-war system and you can get uh, 110, but I don't know. I can't tell you that and be honest with you. That's another thing. If you plan on living here and uh, areas that you're going to go to, if you depend, plan to get away from the city, uh, in most cases, you're going to experience brownouts like I do. Uh, I advise you to get prepared <clears throat> and plan some kind of backup. <coughs> Excuse me. In my case, uh, I switched over to solar for backup. Uh, I started out with a small generator. That was okay, but it was expensive <coughs> to operate. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies. Uh, it was a 3,000 watt gasoline generator. And uh, it took a liter per hour. That don't sound like much. But you take a dollar ten an hour, adds up after a day or so. So, but it was great for emergency use. Uh, I won't uh, knock it. If you're only going to use it for a few hours at a time, it's okay, but if you have to depend on it for days, uh, expensive. You know, we went through, uh, like with Hurricane Odette, uh, we was a month getting electricity back. If it hadn't been for our solar, we'd be, as they say, up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> I would say something differently. But anyway, uh, it is uh, really... <clears throat> it's almost paid for itself uh, over the time I've installed it. Because I started out with small lights only. Uh, added to it as a, I can afford to. 
And when the time comes, I'll, I'll upgrade it some more. Right now, I'm hitting about 50%, uh, depending on how much sunshine I get. Uh, during the months of uh, December and January, that's the and part of November, I got three months, or almost three months, uh, that I don't get enough sunshine to really offset much. Yeah, I do get to use it. Uh, I keep my batteries up for times like this. Uh, the reason I say that, the sun is so far south, my panels uh, are not very efficient. But they're efficient for nine months out of the year, uh, and they make a difference. Right now, I'm, I'm peaking better than using 50% solar. Even on an overcast day, I can still run full solar during the daytime. Uh, my system as a solar panels consists of 2.4 kilowatt and I'm using a 3000 watt standalone inverter and I'm using two uh, MPP solar um, uh, controllers now personally I would prefer an inverter that I don't have to use separate uh, controllers but at the time when I bought my inverter uh, those were just out of my price range. I'm not complaining about the inverter I've got. It's very good. 3,000 watts and it powers everything I have in the house. That runs the air conditioner, my pump, and deep freezer, refrigerator, and two TVs, and so forth. So, and it, it's done a great job. And it depends on how much funds I can set aside on what I do when I do upgrade. One thing I'm going to do probably right off the bat, uh, as soon as I put enough money together, we're talking probably another year, if my batteries last that long, is upgrade my batteries. And that's, the, that's the biggest issue. If you can do solar, do not, do not, listen to me now, do not use lead acid batteries. They've got a limited cycle life, and they, you're looking at even the best of the lead acid, uh, three to five year max. Mine are getting ready to start in their third year, and I can already see a big difference in their reserve capacity. The biggest issue is, you can only use a maximum of 50% of the battery, which is a not recommended. Now, if you want your batteries to last a long time and lead acid, 20% is usually the margin. I'd have to have, instead of my six batteries, I'd have to have 24 batteries. And then there would be times I still would use more than 20%. Uh, and that's not good for lead acid. They do deteriorate. No, my battery pack right now, the six batteries, got a, a 450 amp hour total. They're 150 amp hour batteries. And they're in series for 24 volts, then parallel. So I got three banks of 24 volts, if you understand that. And that gives me 450 amperes, which is 225 usable amperes, which is roughly around a little over 5 kilowatt. But now I can only get around 3.5 kilowatt at most. And you know, during the daytime when I am using the solar full, I've only got uh, about 6 hours that I can get enough sunshine to overcome. Uh, using the batteries. Then the, as the you know early morning you know you got uh, sunshine and it gradually gets to the point where it's all working off the panels. And so you're actually still pulling from the batteries. Then it, usually around 9 a.m. Uh, it gradually starts putting back in the batteries and supplying my needs. 
But during that time, you know, I don't use a full 2400 watts. Um, so the excess is charging the batteries. There's another thing about lead acid batteries. They do take more, you waste a lot of energy charging those batteries. If you uh, can understand, I try to explain. Uh, if I'm pumping that 1000 watts into the battery, the actual what's going in the battery is about 700 watts. A lot of waste, you got 300 watts to just throw away because of the resistance. So, that's another reason lead acid's not recommended. Now, you need really, uh, I'm going to switch over to the lithium uh, phosphate batteries. I don't vast what the phosphate, if I pronounced that correctly. Now, those batteries you can take down and use them for 15, 20 years at 80% or more. Even some you can take down 90%. That's a big difference. I mean, you take the same wattage, uh, amperage rather, the rating that I've got right now, 450 amps, that would give me almost 10 kilowatts and comparing to 5. Double. That's why I said do not use lead acid. Uh, I used the lead acid because at the time I needed the backup and I could not get uh, in my price range uh, the lithium ion phosphate batteries. Uh, I just couldn't get them in my price range. Even though I wanted them desperately. Uh, personally, uh, you know, I should have went with uh, a small pack two or three kilowatts of storage and just add it to them but mistakes are made that's what it's all about that's lit life but I'm sitting here with the pleasure of I'm fully on the batteries right now and everything's functioning but you know I'd be lucky to make it well it probably won't make it to daylight but, uh, when the sun comes up it'd be close because, see, I run my refrigerator and deep freeze 24-7 on solar. And everything outside here, i got a TV, my internet and everything, is on the solar. And I also got a water cooler, which I don't use that often. I don't even turn it on uh, very seldom. Yeah, but I do have a little hot plate that I make my coffee with, which I enjoy. So that's a, that's a little information, you know, about what you can expect. If you plan on moving here, what you need to know that uh, the electricity here is not like the Western world. You know, it's not as dependable. It's the voltage fluctuation that's, that's the biggest issue. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> it is very hard on the appliances. Yeah. And if you get the transformers that um, stabilizes the voltage, if you only got one or two items, it's not so bad. But those transformers are limited too, it depends on the wattage you need. Uh, and they can get expensive. If you need one for a refrigerator or a deep freeze like I got, and your air conditioner, air conditioner takes a healthy unit. That could run into some money, but it doesn't cure your brown house. Uh, you take a uh, roughly, I think I think I looked at a 1500 watt inverter, which would cover a refrigerator and maybe a deep freeze. Um, those were right at a hundred dollars. Uh, most of them were priced around 4,000 pesos, 4,500. Uh, you start adding those up and not getting nothing when there's a brownout. To me, it's a waste of money. No, I could have probably saved my refrigerator, not my refrigerator, but my air conditioner, if I had one, 
that wanted to handle my air conditioner, they're about three hundred dollars. Because you know, <clears throat> because of the surge wash. Even though my air conditioner is one horse, seven hundred fifty watts, but a lot of people don't take in consideration. You got a blower motor in there too, and that could vary too, depending on your air. Uh, in most cases, it's probably about sixty watts to hundred watts. So you're looking at eight hundred and fifty watts. Now you got a surge about four times the wattage. That's thirty-two hundred watts. That's a healthy unit uh, that you'd have to purchase. Uh, I recommend if, on refrigerators and deep freezers and things of that nature, or anything that's got a compressor, uh, doing at least five times over the wattage to, in order to be able to handle the surge without uh, damaging uh, your device. Uh, so that gives you an idea. But I'm sitting here enjoying my morning, and uh, I'll be watching probably some old shows and so forth on Netflix, too, since I have internet now. <laughs> uh, that was, that's been an ordeal, and uh, of course I've got previous videos on that. But anyway, folks, I appreciate you watching, and hopefully everybody's well, and Please like, share, and subscribe.